here, and this is Cutter Kyle, and welcome to Wheels of Fury. <laughs> This is Killer Kyle, and welcome to Wheels of Fury. And today we do another look back at classic wrestling, WWWF, yes. Water Ride Wrestling Federation. Yes. Where there was no bullshit, there was all wrestling all the time. And it's kind of funny because you watch these matches and they were going real fast. Oh yeah, you watch matches nowadays. Maximum, like, they, they generally go 15 20 minutes solid, easy. Back then, matches didn't even make 10 minutes. They're lucky if they got five. I guess that's just they wanted to keep the action going. If you, I guess, no, and I think you don't want to stink up the room, and yeah. You know, the longer the match, the more it's like, okay. But, I mean, there's a time and a place, I guess. And yeah. There were some really good matches on this one, actually. Oh, yeah. We're looking at December, or no, October 29th, 1977. And, you know, Vince McMahon is doing commentary. Yeah. Seemed to be the only guy doing commentary for this show. Yeah. But you did have an interview with the Grand Wizard, who basically talked about a trophy, the best manager or something. Yeah, so manager of the year. Manager of the year, yeah. Like Blue Albano and Freddie Blassie and the Wizard. Old school and pretty cool. So, so we start off with this match. We've got Death Row with Baby. <laughs> The American Dream against Joe Turco. Oh, yeah. And I was sad to Kyle, too. It's kind of funny. Dusty doesn't even look that big in the 70s, anyways. Yeah, in this match in 1977, they generally build Dusty 265, maybe a little more. But in this one, he was like 261 pounds. Yeah. And very trim. Ah, uh, yeah. And he has a little blonde fro. And he's moving in the ring, you know. And he's got the robe. And... Being very flamboyant. Yeah. You know, and... Doing the arm holes to Toro. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean... Dusty obviously won this match, but... There's a lot of arm holds from him, and yeah, it was basically like arm bar for like two minutes. Turco might have got in some offense, a back elbow, an elbow drop. A little over three minutes later, Dusty gets the win. Yeah, so that goes to show you that I got the heels over oh, just enough to. I don't know, be on the good guy for a while and have the face win. Yeah. I guess that's the only way I could put that. But yeah, this was a good match. Again, all these matches are going to be very short, but very cool, you know. Yeah. Everybody knows Dusty Rose throughout his career from Florida to from Triple WF days to. NWA, AWA, WCW. WCW, back to 
W the WWF in the nineties and oh, yeah, of course. Infamous for being one of the guiding lights, if you will, for NXT. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know. And little you know, guy who was very poetic, you know, just kind of yeah. telling the stories and just how funny he was. And yeah, it's very cool. So yeah. I mean, yeah, he's still there to this day. Yeah. We don't really know a whole lot of Joe Turco. I don't know any of Joe Turco. Yeah, I honestly don't. I wish I did. But unfortunately, I don't really know a lot about him. I yeah. may have seen a match or two, but I honestly can't say I have any recollection of him so yeah but next we go on to a match featuring the butcher Paul Vachon the brother of the mad dog the the master master master. <laughs> against Steve King oh yeah this was a good match and you know when I was in high school I had a show on a comedy network for some reason called wrestling with the past and you had it's mostly EWA wrestlers so it was like Baron Von Raschke <laughs> and Gene Kaniski yeah and the Michelle Brothers and stuff like that but yeah I mean it's very cool to see the butcher in the ring yeah I think Mad Dog definitely had the wild side obviously Mad Dog but yeah. that's just saying to Kyle as well the interviews they had were pretty unique as well. Yeah, very unique. Very unique indeed. But it was a good match. Paul won. Yeah. And yeah, I think it was a little Albano was in the corner yeah. of the butcher and yeah. distracted. It'd be like Paul would distract the referee and Lou would go over and like grab by the neck and like start, start choking him or whatever. Yeah. But this was a good match too. Dewey uh, Robertson against Silvano Souza. Yeah, another Canadian. Which is pretty cool. And of course, I've heard of Dewey Robertson, but yes. I don't remember a lot of matches that he was in. Right. So I still have to see that. And Salvo didn't see too much of him, so yeah. I can't really say anything about that but fairly good match i noticed that they had similar ring attire yeah both were both blue signals yeah. right? so i had a red trimming around yes yeah. yeah basically the way you could tell the two apart was well one of the considerable differences was dewey was a little bit taller yeah they're both in blue Souza had red trim on his singlet. Dewey was wearing knee pads and Souza had on white boots. Yes. So, this was a good match too. Yeah. I'd like to find more of Dewey Roberts. And, yeah. I mean, he seemed like he was, they both seemed like they were very cool wrestlers. So, it's going to be another thing for me to do is to look at what else I could find in their matches. Yeah. So. And I believe Dewey would have somewhat extensive career, fairly short career, but one of the place that this took me sticks out in my mind, but Dewey Robinson wrestled in Dallas as the character Missing Link. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. That's right, that's why, yeah. Okay, that makes sense now. I obviously know who the missile link is. Yes. And he was Canadian, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Well, and so in that case, Dewey's no longer with us. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. Dewey ended up winning the match with a surprising hold, you can see, an abdominal stretch. I know. I mean, that's. And see, that's the thing too, back in the day, a simple suplex or an abdominal stretch or a Boston Crab. One year the match. One year the match, yeah. 
I mean, obviously, the Boston Crab was a finisher back when we were watching wrestling as kids, but, oh, yeah. you know, like Martell. Kind of interesting seeing Dewey pre missing Link. Yeah, for sure. So now we got to Bob Backlund versus Greaves. Yeah. And it's very interesting to see a young Bob Backlund in his strength. Yes. He just fucking picks up a guy and just, you know, drops him down. Oh, yeah. Like nothing. Like, Pete was laying on the canvas and Backlund had him in like a top arm bar rest lock, whatever you want to call it. I was just packing him up off the canvas and slamming him back down. Yeah. He did that like two or three times and I was like, oh. my god, how friggin' strong is this man? Yeah, and that's funny, you know, when you're younger, that's the kind of strength you have. Not taking away anyone else. In fact, we talked about Double or Nothing last Saturday yeah. and fucking Dustin Reynolds still is very good at what he does. At 50. Yeah. So. Yeah. But anyways. Bob Backlund won this yeah. match with his infamous atomic knee drop. Yes. We go now to Johnny Rivera and Pete Austin versus Jack Evans and Larry Sharp. Yeah, man. Of the size of those two, the difference in size. Oh, uh, yeah. The uh, height, I should say. Yes. But this was a pretty cool match. And you know, the take teams back then were awesome as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Who won this match again? Sharp and Evans. Oh, right, yeah. And talk about people wearing. The same thing, you know, got Dewey Robertson and Souza both wearing blue singlets. Well, in this tag match, Matt has talked about how he's always loved yeah. tag teams that wear the same ring That's gear. Right. Well, Sharp and Average were both wearing red and kind of silvery or white. And had the stars on the back. Singlets. Yeah. So that was cool. So we have now the main event. That's that short. Yes. And the main event we got High Chief Peter Maivia and Chief J. Strombo versus Moose Monroe and Baron Mikhail Sakluna. See? Yeah. You know, a lot of Canadians in this show. Yes. You know. But this was a good match, and obviously, Peter Mafia was a set trick in the ring. As oh, well. yeah. Uh, happy go lucky Samoan, yes. and then of course the fake Native American, <laughs> Chief J. Stra. And I said to Kyle, you know, that's probably what his gimmick was, was just doing the rain war dance. Yeah, exactly. All the fucking time. But. Yeah, this was a good match, and obviously, you know, Nivea and Strombo really work well together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, but Moose is a good wrestler as well. I mean, Moose Monroe, <laughs> not Moose. Moose. Yeah. Moose Monroe was obviously one of the best wrestlers of that generation, too, so. Oh, absolutely. For sure. But this was a good show, I mean. And we talked about the Grand Wizard. Yeah. And there. We're trying to find more stuff to talk about, but and there is a lot that we could talk about. And that's yeah. great because, the, like, matches nowadays, it seems like, you know, it's long and drawn out. And sometimes it's an hour. Yeah. And with these matches, it's very quick, fast paced, but it's still interesting to watch. Yeah. So, I mean, and, you know, back then, just like a lot of other wrestling companies besides WWF, yeah. or WWE, so yeah. there was match after match after match, and then an uh, interview in between. Yeah. But, I mean, that was back then. Yes. And so, we'll do more of these. I yeah. think it's going to be a lot of fun. 
It should be lots of fun, and you know, getting to do videos like this, be like the 70s, gives you an opportunity to see wrestlers that you may know of from when you were a kid before then and even see wrestlers that you might not have known about like a Joe Turco or a Silvano Souza or Pete Reeves or Bob whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's people that we know, but definitely yes. people that we haven't seen before or we right. haven't really heard of, yes. which is weird. Like, obviously, we don't hear the missing link is, but, yes. but I think that the more we do these, I think it's better just to go back and see a lot of shows before we were born Yes, and stuff like that. The shows that... My uncles certainly watched as when they were kids. Yes. So, I mean, we'll definitely do more of those and maybe something from the 80s. Who knows? I definitely want to do an AWA pay-per-view, but not even a pay-per-view, but a show. show of some kind. So, I mean, yeah, this was a good episode. And check out Kyle's page. We did a NXT TakeOver. 25 and it was kind of interesting because I said well let's do two videos and then we thought about it and it was better that we did it on his channel yeah. and so I mean check that out I'll post a thing up here and it's a lot of fun and it's also fun to do videos outside or elsewhere yes like I did a video about the Dean Ambrose interview. So check that out as well. Yes. But anyways, so well, next weekend's gonna be... Tomorrow night on the WWE Network, 7 o'clock Eastern. Oh, yeah. Check out NXT TakeOver 25. Should be a good show that one week from this night tonight. WWE Network, 2 p.m. Eastern from Saudi Arabia, Super Showdown. Yes, the WWE Super Show, and there's a lot of controversy about that. I understand it, but we're gonna talk about it anyways, because I've been waiting for Undertaker versus Goldberg for fucking many years, so we're gonna go see it. Yes, and then after that, I think it's the new pay per view. I believe after that it'll be Stomping Ground. So, well, look forward to that, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, we should do a list of, well, the schedule of what we're going to do. Yeah. So, we don't decide, like, well, I know we, but. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, All or Nothing is coming up with their shows, and I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you said TNT? Yes. So, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, anyways, so that was a uh, look back at October 29th, 1977, WWWF. I mean, Matt, and this is Killer Kyle. And we will see you later. Deuces. Peace!